Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. We are in Northern Italy with Ducati for their exclusive launch of this, the Multistrada V4S Grand Tour for 2024. This is a 2024 model that we've got exclusive access to. Now, in order to explain what this bike is, I'm gonna need not just my phone, which is full of notes, but also my notepad, because this has got every accessory you could think to imagine that Ducati have in the catalog onto the V4S. But it's not just the V4S with accessories because they've also taken parts from the rally. So we've got the, the rally bars without the rubber mounts. We've got the air scoops for cooling, or you can flip them around to uh, divert the rain away from you. We've got the rally pillion seat. So there's lots of parts of the rally. And then there's also parts from the accessories catalog that Ducati have in their arsenal. It's a huge amount of stuff that you have. So obviously you've got this livery. This is the Grand Tour livery and everything you see on this bike comes as standard. So let me try and run you through everything that they have. So we've got heated grips, not needed today. Heated seat, front and back. We've got the LED lights. We've got the tire pressure monitor system. So we know what the PSI uh, of both front and rear tire is doing. We've got the radar system, the blind spot detection, the panniers come as standard, the hands-free fuel cap, so keyless. We've got heated pillion seat. We've got the black swinging arm, we've got the center stand, we've got the black rear pegs, we've got the new heat shields again to take the heat away, which is the same as the rally. I think that's about it. There might be one or two things we've missed and if we so, we'll put them in the captions. And in terms of equipment that comes with the Ducati, the list goes on, bear with me. So we've got a 6.5 full TFT dash. We've got phone connectivity with uh, full navigation. We've got the quick shifter, which works up and down. We've got power modes rider modes, anti-wheelie, traction control, radar adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, vehicle hold control, minimum preload, and easy lift. I think I've got that right. That is a lot of stuff on a bike. Quick price check, 23,500 when the bike is gonna be available. Now that is a huge amount of tech and a huge amount of accessories on an already amazing bike that we've tested previously. In terms of power and torque, exactly the same as before. In terms of the rider modes, it's the same as the V4S. So you've got the same rider modes, the same traction control, the same cornering ABS, everything as, as before. But as we said, we've got everything thrown on the bike. It's like it went through the accessory catalog and got stuck. Yesterday, we got the opportunity to ride at night, which is something we don't normally do on a press lounge. Set the adaptive cruise control to 140 kilometers an hour, and then you decide the space between you and the vehicle in front. The adaptive cruise control works smoothly and effortlessly. The backlit switch gear, really nice touch, makes it so much easier at night. And then we have the full navigation on the dash. So the six and a half inch dash basically transforms into a huge uh, navigation. Very simple, very, very easy. So we've got the luggage, as you can see on the bikes in front. They're all integrated, color matching, opened with one key, which is in this little cubby hole because the ignition is keyless. We've also got the minimum preload button, which means I can press this, hold it for three seconds. It'll take the preload off the shock and lower the seat. So even when you're a dwarf like me, you could touch the floor. Um, screen is still manually adjustable, but that's extremely easy. The bars are different from the standard Multistrada. I think they're stolen from the Rally. And as it's the S, we've got the semi-active suspension, which adapts as you're riding. So I'm in urban mode now. Um, if I press this, we can see that we're in urban. So that's the traction is on six. ABS is on three. The wheelie control is on five. Front suspension, rear suspension is medium and preload is on four. And I've got the quick shifter on. Now it might look a little bit intimidating, a little bit complicated, but it's not. As you scroll through the modes, Enduro, Touring, Sport, Urban, the suspension changes and obviously the amount of rider aid intervention and throttle response. So in Urban it's very docile and very easy. You don't have the full 170 brake horsepower. So we've got, well we rode actually last night um, from Bologna, the home of Ducati, um, back to uh, where we are now, which is not too far from Imola. So we had a good hour's ride on the motorway last night, playing with the adaptive cruise control and the radar. So it's quite simple, you set your 
uh, speed, say 140 kilometers, I think it was last night, and then you set the distance, how far you want to be from the bike, van, whatever vehicle in front, which is these buttons, setting the distance. So obviously when you're on plus, there's a big distance. When it automatically takes over, when it's minus, there's a smaller distance. But honestly, it is so intuitive and easy. And then we're also um, worth pointing out, we're in urban mode. And yes, it is a V4 kind of similar to a superbike engine. But wow, it's soft in urban. I mean, 2000 RPM, second gear, not touching the throttle. And then just give it a whiff of throttle. Look at that. That's smooth. And then today we've had the opportunity to try the different modes. So we're trying urban, we're trying touring, and we're trying sport. We're not trying enduro today. Um, in urban, you can feel a drastic change in the power. The fueling is very soft. The power delivery is soft. Uh, the suspension, because it's semi-active, as in same as the V4S, is, is very compliant and very soft. You go into touring and you can feel the, the energy pick up again. Um, and then in sport, you can feel that extra urgency of power. You've got 170 horsepower, 125 newton meters of torque. This is a powerful big bike, but when you flick it into that touring and urban, it becomes a real docile, very simple, easy bike to ride considering its size and then its power. For me personally, I kind of want to tweak the suspension a little bit, which I have done, which you can do, because I've added a little bit more preload to take in for the weight of the luggage, which is full because we've been in a hotel overnight. Nice little also touch for me that I really like is the preload. So we can press one button, hold it for three seconds, it basically takes the preload off the shock, which lowers the rear. Now, how much the rear lowers depends on how heavy you are. So if you're six foot eight and 18 stone, it's gonna lower quite a lot. If you're quite short and relatively light like myself, it doesn't lower too much. But that two to three mil of just lowering the shock really helps you to get two feet securely on the ground, especially when you're on a surface like this. Then when you get to around 100 kilometers an hour, the preload automatically comes in, or you can press the button again and you can increase the preload. Even when the preload is wound off the shock, when you're riding it in town, it doesn't really affect stability because you're going so slow. And again, if you're attacking mountain passes like this and you're riding aggressively, you can just flick the button and it'll increase the preload. So as you can tell, we're kind of leaving the urban environment. So what we'll do is we'll flick from urban. So for first mode, there's urban. We'll go for touring, enter touring, Press that button on my thumb, close the throttle, ready to tour in. Yeah, the suspension feels different. How it's reacting is completely different to urban. But the throttle, it's not much the response, it's just a, the delivery. But yeah, this is just multi strata territory. Touring mode on the Grand Tourer. You got the luggage full of the kit. We got cordon ABS and fraction control. Keeping me safe. Stunning views. Oh, what's the weather? Oh, it's 25 degrees. Not having a bad day. In terms of rider aids, Ducati have always been at the forefront of what they're doing with rider aids. The traction control is excellent, the anti-wheelie, which personally I've turned off in sports mode. Um, it just feels like a secure, safe package. In terms of negatives, the, the Diavel and the Rally have got a deactivation system where it cuts off the back two cylinders uh, below 4,000 RPM, if I remember rightly, which means the back two cylinders run a little bit cooler when you're in town or when you're stationary in traffic. The V4S and the V4 Grand Tour, which this is based on, doesn't have that system. So that it doesn't, you can't cut out the back two cylinders before 4,000 RPM like you do on the Rally and you do on the Diablo. But aside from that, there's, there's quite a lot of heat, but today it's been 29, 30 degrees and I'm probably in inappropriate kit for riding in these conditions. I think this will be the bike that sells next year in the Multistrada range because you're saving money when you go for this bike. If you buy a V4S and you try and tick all the accessories to get to the level of this, you end up spending more money. So this is actually cheaper than a fully spec V4S. And 
On this, you also get the air ducts, you get the different bars, you get the rally pillion seat, and you get this beautiful livery. So in terms of, is it a good buy? Well, certainly if you want a fully spec Multistrada V4S. It's gonna be interesting to see how it goes against the competition, which hopefully we'll be get to do at Bike Social when we get it in the UK. It'll also be interesting to see how it goes at Bike Social when we get some miles with a pillion in different conditions, in the wet and in cooler conditions. But in terms of a first impressions here in Italy, well, Ducati really wasn't going to go wrong, really, were they? They've already got an excellent V4S and they've just put all the accessories on and taken some tweaks from the rally. It was a bit of a no-brainer, really. Mm -hmm.